Hello friends, how's everybody doing? I hope you had a good week so far. Uh, we got a great show lined up. Taylor Bright from Stagecoach Entertainment is gonna join us shortly. She is a manager, talent manager here, and she has a bunch of working clients on movies and TV shows, and she's part of my management team. She's an absolute gem. We had an amazing talk with her. We giggled, we laughed, we <laughs> talked about serious things, and it, it ebbed and flowed uh, very beautifully. And she is one of the uh, best managers out there right now. And so I think this is a great conversation to listen to. Um, even if you uh, are not an actor or in the entertainment industry, uh, we, we just cover the gambit and gives you a little bit more insight on how, how the, um, the pizza is made, or is that the saying, or how the cookie is made, how the cookie crumbles. How the how sausage the is made. How the sausage is made. That's it. That's Some the food. One. How the sausage <laughs> is made. I got to sh give a shout out to a fan and listener of the show, Kirsten. Mm-hmm. Uh, dropped off some prune candy. Now I gotta ask Zeke, wh why did she think of me during this? Uh, just because it's uh, it's uh, Chinese candy. Cool. Uh. All right. <laughs> Doesn't answer it, but that's all right. No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. No. It's it's Kirsten. I want to say thank she you just so much. He would like it because you like Asian culture, right? Yes, I respect it. Great. Respect it, and you love it. Uh, um, you know all. Now, now this is making me angry, <laughs> you know, like you not with Kirsten, but the people who made the candy. Yeah, yeah just open stuck it. To the What's that? Wrapper. Just open it. He can't. It's it's, it. it's literally stuck to Wait. the actual wrapper and it's a prune. This, this isn't a funny bit. Uh, just keep going. Just open it, please. Thank he you. got it. Thank you. <laughs> Put it in your what mouth. What was I trying to do the whole time? <laughs> it wasn't a bit. Here we go. <laughs> I don't think you chew oh. it. It's hard oh. candy, dude. What's oh, wrong with it's you? going back. No. no. You didn't oh, like it? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't. No, 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 no. no. She, she owes me like a, like a coffee or something for that. <laughs> okay. No, I'm kidding. Thank you, Kirsten. I'm sorry I didn't like it. That was very. Really? It was weird? I haven't tried it yet. Uh, not a fan. All right. Not a fan of the prune candy. <laughs> prune oh, no. candy. Thank you, Kirsten, uh, yeah. for the thought. It was really special. How is everybody doing? Great. Can you turn my headset down? Because oh, yeah. I am uh, hang dying. On, hang on. Hey, you can take them is, off. Is this one well. yours? Is this is that one it? Or is this somebody else's? Somebody talk um, to me here. No, that sounds is, the same. That yeah, sounds the same. Okay, so same. somebody's just lying to me right now and won't tell me that's their headphones going down. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. I'm looking at you two. One of you two are lying <laughs> to me right now. <laughs> that uh, still sounds one, the is, same. Is, how about this one? Is this that's one? so much better. There oh, it is. You could have just taken them off, though, right? But then I wouldn't be a part of, like, the team. Oh, okay. You're always part of the team. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Um, so I have to address this before we, we, we introduce Taylor. We had a couple comments from last week's episode. Mm. And if you watched the entire episode, you would see that my original reaction to the moose getting hit by the car and flying through the air was, oh, my gosh, I really hope that moose died quickly because that is a very, very tough time for an mm -hmm. animal. And um, I am I laugh at stuff like that because it's insane. Like, it's insane to see that. I don't laugh at the pain of an animal has. And I think we talk right. about this when people are hurt. I'm not laughing that they're hurt. Right. I'm laughing at the fact that the veil of life has lifted and they're experiencing life at its fullest. And it's such a <sighs> vivid, vicarious feeling, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. And then that's my expression, laughter. Yeah. So... Uh, sorry you left, but uh, we're going to keep doing what we do here at We Sam's World. So, yeah, that's Thanks it. Thanks for playing. Thanks for playing. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Nobody's perfect. No. We love mooses. Meese. I like this a little bit better. It reminds oh. me of Lord of the Rings whenever Gandalf is going through the uh, infinite. When he, yeah, when he and comes this back. is on accident, so. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, that's pretty. I Maybe don't that. like this stuff, you know? <laughs> the bad great. quality. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. That's okay. It's not, it's not your fault. I'm just saying it's. Uh, That's all right. It's, we'll no one can one see now. it anyway right now. Oh. So. oh we'll we do yeah. it next time. Yeah. And it's still, it's still there. there. That's, That's just strange. Rating. That's nuts. That's nuts, dude. That's crazy how life is like that. Life, yeah. <laughs> hey, how, how's everybody doing? Good. Good. How about you? Great. Great week. Great week. Great week. Yeah, I've seen on your Instagram you've been running hard. Yep. Really training for that marathon. Running, running hard, hard, getting those running miles hard. in. Running hard, getting hard. <laughs> That's what we Sam always says. 
Oh. All right, everybody. Candy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're, tr- we're trying. <laughs> we have a. These are your words. That's what you can't. I never it. said I have that. never heard Lisa mm. say running hard. No, no, no. Did you hard. see his Instagram post? He captioned it running hard. Getting, getting hard. Getting hard. Really? Yeah. Did he? Yeah. I have to see this. Hey, we didn't do that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I apologize for them. They're out of hand. They've been in their corner for way too long. And so they're just. I got to get out of here. <laughs> they're dying to say something. I apologize for that. Uh, and just stay tuned after this commercial break for the the great manager, Taylor Bright. Can I start with that? Absolutely. Absolutely not. <laughs> this is trying to be a professional episode as much as we can. Okay? Oh God! We've already I... lost two followers from our last episode. Really? They sent us messages because <laughs> because we're recording, right? Yeah, because we played a video. Okay. And I have to clear this up right now. We played a video where a moose was crossing the road. Okay. And it gets hit by a car and it gets thrown in the air, fifteen feet, and then goes another thirty feet. I immediately say in the video, in the YouTube video, I really hope it was a quick death. And then I proceeded to laugh because it was an insane thing, you know, to watch. Because it's 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 laughing not because of the pain, but because it's so insane to see a I moose mean, fly that fat fat. I can't stop laughing. You're just telling me about it. Yeah. And so people thought I laugh at animals dying. And it's like, that's not me. No, it's not. It's also not me, but this is... <laughs> <laughs> See? Start like this. This is like, <laughs> <laughs> this is like hey guys, talent manager Taylor Bright laughs at client We Sam Keish telling her about moose dying. <laughs> I don't know how we're gonna get through an episode. This is we this might is just real. laugh the whole time and that would be really bad. <laughs> No, that would be wonderful. It would be fun for us. I don't know how fun it would be for everyone else. It'll be so much fun for them. And that's okay, fine. If those two followers want to come back on this one, they're welcome. But if not, that's okay. You know what? It's a circle of life. Life and death. It is. All things live, all things die. And that moose is in moose heaven right now. Maybe he came back as a person this time. They say when you get reincarnated, the bigger animal you are, the more likely you are to come back as a human. So. Oh. <laughs> is that why... Now, now we've gotten to real territory here. This is why I brought Taylor on, ladies and gentlemen, not to just talk oh about acting God. or the business. I mean, like, Please continue with this theory. I'm very intrigued here. So, blue whales? <laughs> Definitely. I, we can't do this. Like, I have to be a professional. I'm like crying. I'm laughing so hard. Yes, it, they, it's, a, it's a real theory that people who believe in reincarnation often believe that, like, you know, if you're a mouse, you're probably not going to be a human. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> My manager, ladies and gentlemen, at Stagecoach Entertainment. <laughs> Steve's going to literally murder me. He's going to be like, what the fuck are you thinking? <laughs> you know what? You know what's amazing? You're so good at your job. <laughs> you really are. And I love how we're starting off like this. I know. But I also really believe that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Stagecoach stock has just <laughs> went through the roof. Yes, something like that. Well, Netflix continues to fall. Yeah, I'm uh, sweating, by the way. I'm so literally you know. crying. Do we have any tissues? Because yeah. this is like, oh my like, gosh. I'm sure I have like mascara all over my face. No, no, you look great. You, you look great. If there's any kind of okay. mascara issue, we will stop cool. the show. Yes. Peyton, Zeke will inform us immediately. Right. Last looks, priorities. There you go. This is a professional show, as you can tell. I feel like we're going to be here all day. We might be. <laughs> this might be a four-hour <laughs> podcast. <laughs> um, no, we'll send we'll send my my girlfriend Shannon, who's all in. Like she's a mindset coach for actors. Shannon. Shannon. Okay. She what was, does that mean, mindset coach? So, uh, we like probably shouldn't air this because I'll have her come in and actually talk about it. But oh, that's, no. We're, we're, um, we're, we're, she works with actors and artists of all types, musicians, mm-hmm. authors, um, on how they think about their career. And how they think about auditioning and getting auditions, mm. and it's I think it's really important. But she's more she's a better person to talk about spirituality right, right, right. with because I'm just like say things like moose get to be people. 
<laughs> well, I think that's such a <coughs> critical point that you bring up with actors who are coming into the professional field, whether it be in L.A. or New York or Atlanta, wherever there's a high density of acting projects. I think understanding, first and foremost, that it's a business and there's a certain... Uh, level of professionalism that is needed with this and mm -hmm. at the same time a constant training because it is a craft and learning how to navigate and balance those two things is crucial for success it's hard because <clears throat> sorry all the crying has made me <laughs> phlegmy oh, no um it, it's a skill and it's also your dream right mm -hmm. kind of like baseball Steve and I often make the baseball analogy of like, you don't show up to Dodger Stadium, you don't move to LA, show up to Dodger Stadium, bang on the door and say, hey, I wanna play pitcher today. Right. You probably play t-ball, probably play travel ball, maybe some baseball in high school, maybe you play college, and then you go to single A, double A, triple A, that's what they're called, right? Mm -hmm. And you get called up to the majors. It's kind of crazy to think that you're gonna come to LA with no acting experience, Never, and I mean, when I say experience, I mean community theater. I tell everybody, like, if your kid is interested in acting, have them do a local community play. Because acting is a joy and a passion and a love. It is also a career, but those two things don't necessarily have to be the same thing. You can act just because you like to act. Mm -hmm. But if you want it to be a career, it is a skill, it is your dream, but you have to work for it. Mm -hmm. That was kind of convoluted, but you know what I mean. Like, no, absolutely. And uh, I think one of the major obstacles, and we've talked about this uh, before privately and with Steve, that a lot of actors come out here and they're like, okay, well, I want uh, to be, where's my auditions yeah, for the next Batman regular? film? Yeah, where's my series regular audition for the next uh, uh, sitcom, the next hit sitcom? With And it's like, what are you talking about? Like, do you understand how it works? So I actually want to, talk to you and and talk out loud about it because there's no guidebook out here when you come out here on how to start so just to clear up some of the fog of war that is associated with uh this acting business and yes i do make so many analogies with acting business and war and fighting <laughs> so i mean it's a battle every single day is a battle and mm. the highs are really really high yeah and the lows are really hard yeah and they're really really low devastating we'll yeah. talk about those in a little bit oh. i'm so sorry uh, can i get a pen and paper real quick thank you um one of the first things i want to talk to you about so that people understand the business a little bit more is talking about what a manager does and how breakdowns for roles that are available come to you and then how do you sift through your clients and then that process in which to even try to get an audition for your client because people think it's just like oh just get one yeah. just get one yeah i think especially now that everything self tapes and we're <clears> seeing it more and more where people will be like oh hey my friend's reading for this can i just put it on tape and it's like if i'm sending you an audition a self tape a producer session whatever version of it it is it's because casting has said I can. Mm -hmm. I'm not just going rogue and sending out auditions. So my perspective on this is a little different because my first four years in the business, I was a casting assistant. And I worked for so many amazing casting directors and I sat in on casting sessions every single day. And so because of that, when I get a breakdown, when I see a breakdown, how I look at it and how I submit and pitch on it, I think is different than a lot of my colleagues. Because the secret is that a lot of the times the casting directors don't write the breakdowns. Mm. A lot of the times there is somebody at Breakdown Services, which is our main platform for receiving the breakdowns, writes them. What? Yeah. They send them the episode and then they have a copywriter at Breakdown Services who writes the breakdown. Dun, dun. Yeah. <laughs> See, Wait, I'm exposed. sorry. That, that doesn't really m make a lot of sense. Am and I it's crazy? It's not every office. Right. But okay. It's some of them. Oh wow. So when I see a breakdown, and I'm looking at the information, I am looking for the most basic points. I'm looking for age. I am looking for ethnicity, mm -hmm. and ge and gender, or you know, if they're looking for non-binary performers, um, and that's kind of what I look for. 
because all that other information may have been written by casting, may not have, but it wasn't written by the person who wrote the episode for sure. Oh. It wasn't written by the director. It wasn't written by this person making the decision. And I love casting directors. I think they are incredibly invaluable in our business. They are truly our biggest allies. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the times they're on a lot of projects and the breakdowns go out really fast. Mm. And a lot of the times what they're looking for changes from when the breakdown gets uploaded. So if I feel somebody fits the general parameters, I'm going to submit them. Because mm. what's the worst thing they're going to do? Say no? Yeah. But if I don't submit them, it's an automatic no. Right. So let's just try. And then let's pick up a phone. Let's call casting. Let's see what they're looking for. Let's have an honest conversation. Or let's, sometimes it's an email, you know, now with everyone working from home. And really ask them what they're looking for. So that I can, in that moment, put together who I think is the best fit on our roster and it's you know sometimes it's one person sometimes it's two or three it just kind of depends on the breakdown in the role um and then let's see what casting says yeah and 99 percent of the time if we take the time and are very thoughtful casting will say yes mm. why would they say no if i'm like hey this person is so right they're so special i believe in them so much please 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 see them mm. that's so tough to talk to casting like that because then I immediately think of the multitude of managers and agents who are calling and emailing them as well with that same thing right yeah but it's relationships right right you know the casting directors that I, I know really well and I have mm -hmm. great relationships with I've, I've been managing almost six years I've been sending them great people consistently for six years it's not like I'm true I'm Joe Schmo off the street being like I'm a talent manager yeah. like read my actors right so that's part of it. Yeah. It's it's their trust. And that's why it's so important that every time our clients are getting opportunities and getting auditions, that they're doing their very best work. Right, right, right. Because that is not only how you guys continue to get called into casting, but it's how they continue to see our people. Mm-hmm. Now, let's say casting goes, okay, great. Yeah. We'd love to bring this person in. Mm -hmm. That's when you immediately send the information, yeah, time, they, they, all that stuff. Now they, it's more self-tapes than being in the room. So they'll send us this email, <coughs> typically. Sometimes they send it over email, it just depends, um, with all the information, the sides, any additional notes that sometimes, you know, the writer, the director, the casting director wants to share. Mm -hmm. And then we send all that out. Great. The deadline, and I usually give a fake deadline. I think you know that by now. No, I do not know that. <laughs> so great. I love that. Now let's talk about why there's a fake deadline. There is a fake deadline because life happens people get in car accidents their cars get totaled um breakdown services goes down a lot and i can't upload tapes um sometimes people need to redo things mm -hmm. we don't typically have you redo things because your tapes are always awesome thank you but sometimes i watch something and it happened um a couple times this week where i watched a tape and i was like oh just it's missing something when i call the client we talk it through and sometimes the t they say, nope, this is my choice. This is what I want to do. I am happy doing this. And I say, okay. And sometimes they redo it. Most of the time they redo it if I ask them to. Yeah. But I will say if someone's like, no, I'm really happy with this. And here's why. I will say, okay, I trust your choice. Hmm. You are the actor. I am not. Um, so that's why the deadline is almost always about 24 hours early. I like that. I never knew that before. It's a contingency plan. I <clears throat> have a thing where if I'm not doing anything and mm -hmm. I get an audition I'll start on it right away I know uh, there's you, a couple reasons for that but you, go ahead you will turn auditions around in like 12 hours like mm. almost always yeah yeah because I'm not doing anything else well it's your usually. job this yeah. is your job and I feel if the deadline is for instance and there's like a couple of things that go into that actually yeah if it's in my wheelhouse mm -hmm. I should be able to deliver something within easily 12 hours easily 12 hours that's my opinion because i'm always training and i'm always working as an actor so i'm looking at that and then also i'm like what if another self-tape comes in and it will right i don't want to have two or three stacked on top of each other because i remember the days now i'm acting like it happened like a long time ago but during pilot season i'm lucky enough to go out four or five times a week so i'm prepping yeah that stuff all week long and then some days i have three auditions well yeah especially during pilot season you know especially for someone like you who is reading on truly every pilot you know back in the day we used to make 90 pilots a year i know now we make 
Yeah. Maybe during, during yeah. broadcast season, but. So there's like a, there's a way to balance all that. And I'm like, well, I don't, if I'm, this is all on my plate. I want to make sure I'm, I'm working on it very well and I can get it out there efficiently because surprise to surprise to people who haven't worked in TV, it's not slow paced whenever you're shooting a TV show. It's so fast paced, which I like, but for some people, that's a huge surprise for them. Days are long. Have you ever encountered that with a character or with a character, with a, um, an actor? Like where they're like, oh my god, it was so fast. I didn't feel like I was able to, ex- you know, do all the choices I wanted and stuff like that. I mean, yeah, I think everyone feels like, especially on TV, especially on broadcast, everyone would like another take, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I learned very early. Um, my old boss, Christian Bullock, who has always been, you know, a great mentor to me, when we were in casting sessions, and I think this applies on set too. The rule is, if you need another take, ask for one. Yeah. If you want another take. Mm. there's a difference between needing another go and wanting another go and I think that's an important distinction for working actors Yeah, is if you really feel like you didn't get what you needed to get in the scene you need to ask for another take and that's a scary thing to do especially when the the days are moving really fast but more often than not it's not a need it's a want Mm -hmm. and if you just want another take then you need to move forward speaking of another take I've been practicing with my brother on doing mock auditions with self tapes because I feel a lot of actors are developing really bad habits with these self tapes because they get to do one after the other after the other in the comfort of their own home so whenever they do a director or producer session or they go they start going back in the rooms they're not going to be ready they're not going to be able to deliver right off the bat it seems like you agree with me I do and I actually agreed with you before COVID happened because Mm -hmm. pre-COVID back when we would have studio and network tests which gone are the days of going into NBC Universal and going into the this stage basically. It's like one of their presentation rooms and every executive they can find is sitting in the audience just staring at you, waiting for you to do your test. Mm-hmm. And you know the number that you're gonna make if you book it and you've seen all the other people in the lobby and you're like, oh my goodness, it's me or one of these three guys and one of our lives is about to change. You know how much I love that? You know how intense that is? <laughs> it's crazy, but gone are those days. Yeah. But pre-COVID, when we would have clients that weren't based in LA, right? So they were maybe based in New York or Chicago or Atlanta, or they were out of town doing a job and they weren't going in the room, you would come into that environment all of a sudden, not having been in a session for a year. And you're like, so like for somebody like you, it's great. But for somebody that hasn't been in a session in a long time or that's only been taping, Yeah, that's why I like it. I know. Reduces it's, the competition. Tests are not about your acting. And I try and stress mm. this to everybody oh, I can. interesting, okay. A network test, a studio test. And like maybe some of the studio executives are going to watch me like, yeah, they learn it's about your acting. I disagree. I think a test is truly, especially before COVID, when you'd go into that little room and they'd all stare at you and some of them would be on their phones and some of them would be not necessarily paying attention. It was not an accident, in my opinion. Because if you can't hold it together on that stage in front of this audience of people, how are you going to hold it together on set? When there is a gaffer putting a light right above your head and there is somebody tugging at your wardrobe and they're going, go, go, go. We have to go. We have to get this. We're lo- like, we're running out of daylight. If we don't get this take, we don't make our episode. And then we have to reshoot. And it's a $100,000 day. Yeah. How are you going to handle that pressure if you can't stand in front of a group of people on a stage and deliver your lines? Tests or are a test of your will and your character. Mm-hmm. And they are watching you the whole time. Yeah. From the moment you walk in, they want to make sure you're cool and chill and easy to work with, and they want to spend the next seven years with you. Exactly. It's an investment. Yeah. If you are in the test, they've seen you act. They like your acting. They probably love your acting. That's why you're there. Mm-hmm. Something I highly recommend for people that me and my buddy Isaiah were doing by accident during our Sunday classes yeah. was running a scene in ways that don't make sense for the breakdown. Mm-hmm. So... We would just do it just to have fun. If the character was a nice person, we'd make him into an asshole. If mm-hmm. he was like a uh, a good friend, we'd make him into an enemy for the next. Like just to play around with just these random extremes, and it benefited us because I've noticed on multiple producer sessions, not just for me but for him, we'd have a director be like, "Hey, let's just play it this way just to do it." Yeah. And he wants and and he or she wants to see if you're directable. It's exactly what it is. It has nothing to do with the character. You would never do it that way on set. 
but it's like hey you probably haven't practiced it this way so let's do it completely out of left field and just yeah. try it yeah and if you can't modulate in that session you're probably not going to get that job yeah because the real time shooting is not any easier no being on set is hard this is like a thing that I don't think people realize. Being a series regular, being a major recurring guest star on a show, working 12 to 16 hour days every single day, shooting an episode every eight to 10 days is hard. Yeah. It is hard work. It is that. exhausting. I know. I know you love it. I love when you're working. Nothing makes me happier. Me too. But it, it's the dream, right? And everyone's like, mm -hmm. oh, I want to be a series regular. I want, And it's like, yes, it is the dream, but it is also a test of your stamina. Mm. Yeah. It's a test of your character. Can you sh can you still work a fourteen hour day, have an eleven hour turnaround if it's a day if it's an exterior shoot per sag, yeah. and still show up the next day and be lovely and polite and say hello to everybody, yeah. and not be crabby and grumpy? Yeah, hard work. I worked with an actress. I don't know if you know her, Jasmine Savoy Brown. I do. I love her. Oh, you know, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm break your fan. heart. I'm gonna break your heart. <gasps> yeah, she's terrible. <laughs> Like she'll work for like like an hour or two, and then she's like, I don't know. She'll make those sounds. She's gonna see this. You know that, right? Yeah, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> she's she just got Emmy nominated. She's gone to her head. She hasn't responded back to any of my Facetime calls, any of my letters. We had to do an Instagram live Did you together. Send her and posted carrier pigeon. Did you try that? No, I have not. Mm. But she's anti animal. I heard so any kind of animal. She's like, no. Is she the one who unfollowed you because you showed the moose? No, but I think she tried to <laughs> get me banned on Instagram or something, and oh, I was like. Yeah. Guys, I'm really worried about her. You know, it's gone to her. It's hard to be an Emmy nominee. It is. I, I think she she does acting for the fame. <laughs> Wait, Jasmine. Sam, got this. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? No, I can't. What? I, what? Jasmine. Jasmine. What? Is she about to like walk in like? No. You know, she did the worst prank I've ever seen in my entire life on this show. No. What'd yeah, yeah. Do? She was terrible. And I, I really don't know how she's working. But <laughs> what, what, what? So Executives might see this and then not want to hire her because they think you're serious. Side note, I'm joking. <laughs> Obviously, it's insane that I would say these things. Okay? I love Jasmine. We know. But this is for real. Um, no. <laughs> no, she uh, she dressed up in a banana outfit. Okay. And that's it. Like, I close my eyes. She no. put the banana outfit on, and I opened them, and she's like, prank. And I'm like. It's not a prank. Yeah, thank you. It's literally not a prank. Yeah. That's like a surprise. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love Jasmine Savoy Brown. She's an amazing actress. She's so splendid to work with. <sighs> Who's your favorite actor you've ever worked with? Favorite actor? Yes. Me. Have you seen my self tapes? I do. I They're see so more. good. I think everyone that's watching this episode needs to know that I watch We Sam Act probably more than anyone in the entire world, with the caveat of Steve. I watch it's true. I watch you act basically every single day. Because you basically have an audition. Almost. It's been um, slow. It's, it's July. I know, you I'm are a professional act. actor. <laughs> you know this. <laughs> Hey Taylor, it's been really slow. Like, when's it gonna pick up? When they start shooting things. By the way, I've never said that to you guys. No, ever. I know. I'm, but I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, hyper I'm hyperbolizing. Like, I know, I know, I know. My favorite thing is everyone's like, "Hey, it's been really slow, right?" I'm like, "Yes, that is in fact what happens when nothing's shooting." I wish one of you, <laughs> one time, you guys go, "What? <laughs> it's slow? Really?" <gasps> uh, I'm we're, gonna get clients are gonna drop me after this. Maybe no, we shouldn't not. air this. No, no, you are. By far one of the best managers out there right now, and it is an absolute oh, pleasure to work with you. Uh, you're super professional, you're super on it, and the proof is in the pudding with all your clients. Thank you. You did once quote saying Taylor is okay, so this feels like a major step up from that. It's on camera to one of my clients, to one of your better clients. That's yeah, true. A client that I've been working with for a very long time, Sadie Stanley. Sadie Stanley, she's great. She is. When's this airing? If it's after this week, oh, then I can't spill the tea. Not tea, it's beans, but it's really good news really? about Sadie. Yeah, I'm very proud. She's the killer in the next Scream movie? No. Oh, sorry. No. no. You know how bad I want to be the killer in the next Scream movie? Well, if you tell me things like that, I can make calls, but I can't, like... You know why? Because Jasmine's in it, oh, yeah. and I want to be like, 
chasing Jasmine with a knife. Like, Come here, Jasmine! It always comes back to Jasmine. And they'd be like, cut! We Sam, don't say Jasmine. Say her character's <laughs> name. And I'm like, I can't. ADR it. <laughs> um, I did get to go to ADR with a client yesterday. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't normally go to ADR, but um, it's my client, Lucette, who is the lead of National Treasure for Disney+. Plus. And ah, I am great. so excited to see the show that any snippet or clip I can get from Disney, I will take. So I literally just went and sat in ADR and was like, this is the coolest thing ever. And it really is. Can't wait to see it. Me too. I've heard a lot of good things about it. It's amazing. Yeah. Very excited. I love the original movies. They're one of my, uh, I don't know, I really like those adventures. They're great. Yeah. They're great, um, what I call, and this is a compliment. For some reason, people think it's not a compliment when I say it, but they're great airplane movies because I want to, like, cozy yeah. in and go on an adventure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Jerry Bruckheimer is a genius. I think we can all agree on that. And his tenure, like, I don't think he's ever made a bad movie or a bad series, mm -hmm. but I'm also, like, a huge fan girl. So I yeah. literally emailed his assistant yesterday and was like, Top Gun is the best movie of the year, maybe of all time. Oh, I still need to see that. We I mean, talked about this I know. last week, and you promised so me busy. you would go see Top Gun. I'm so busy. Was so, really? Because you just said it was really slow. No, no, no. I've been working out my ankles. Oh. <laughs> I just do ankles now. <laughs> cool. Love that. Ankle king. Ankle king. Cool. Yeah. cool hashtag cool. custard king. Hashtag ankle king. Yeah. Yeah, I need you to go see Top Gun. Okay. I'm not in it, so it's hard for me to see stuff I'm not in. Just Fair so you enough. know. You know this about me. I do. If I'm not in it, why am I watching? We it? Sam's just got self tapes on repeat on the TV. Yeah. Alex, is this true? It's true. Cool. Fair enough. Yeah. Whenever uh, I have house parties or anything, it's just my demo reel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, like I will say, like when I'm having a bad day, a lot of the times, like I'll pull up like an episode of something a client's, and like when oh. when your sh when Law and Order was airing, mm -hmm. I was I would like if I'm having a bad day and I'm like, oh, this job like this job's tough, this business is tough. I'll like put on an episode. and I'll be like, that made me feel better. What 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 makes those tough days? Um, I mean, uh, there's a lot of things. Like sometimes we get really bad news. Sometimes there's a job you really really want for a client, and and they really really want it more than anything, and it just mm. it doesn't go their their way for a thousand reasons. Yeah, it's never about them. It doesn't make it hurt any less. Yeah, um, I can tell, and this is actually like <laughs> something crazy about me is I can tell you where I was. Every single time I've called a client after a studio test and told them that they didn't get it. Oof. I don't have it written down, but I can tell you where I was. I mean, if you wanted to, me to right now, I could tell you, but I will not be doing that. Um, I know exactly where I was, how I was feeling, how I told them, and how they responded. And those are burned into my brain way more than the, oh my God, you got it. What's the worst one? <sighs> I shouldn't, we can't put that on air. Why'd you say it? <laughs> <laughs> just mark that one as, yeah. as you, a bleep. What, you can just blur out the, the name. The yeah, 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 the yeah, 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 yeah. No, but you can't even do that because like other clients will get mad. And be like, Taylor, that hurt more than when I didn't get blank. Okay, we'll bleep out everything. Just bleep, out, yeah, yeah, just yeah, bleep yeah. it out. Just leave it no in worries. and we'll bleep it out. No but worries. That, that one was, and that was trauma. <laughs> I promise you no clients are going to be saying anything bad about you. I hope not. I really love them. They really love you. Good. There's a reason why you're on the show, by the way. Oh. I don't have anybody on the show that I don't want to talk to. Really? Yeah. That's so exciting. Because yeah. you did, in fact, once quote that I was just okay. Yeah. <laughs> you're right at the mark. I, I'm never going to let We Sam live that down. Like, I was, like, listening to episodes, like, this week to, like, prep, getting yeah. in the zone, yeah, yeah, doing yeah. My, my homework. And I, like, I'm pulling up to Adobe, and that, and I hear you say that, and I'm like, love it. What? <laughs> What, what's it like being on the show from that perspective? I love it. I mean, I love this because, you know, we go to lunch and we sit there for like three and a half hours and just talk. It's, it's sure. like talking to an old friend. I mean, it is talking to an old friend. Mm -hmm. um, and I just like, I think you get the business in a way that so many people don't. And mm. I love that. Like, I love talking to you about the good days and the bad days. I feel like you understand what we do almost better than anybody, mm. which is a testament to the re relationship you have with Steve, I think. Yeah. But... Yeah. I mean, well, I would stay all day. Well, I think it's important to understand the cross disciplines in any kind of career path that you choose because knowing how m your manager does their work and your agent um, and casting and producers and all that stuff, it's just going to give you more knowledge, more information to make you do your job better and give you that little bit of an edge when yeah. in the casting room or during the audition. Something I like to do for um, self-tapes and 
it's a privilege, I guess, and it's an it's a positive thing with self tapes. I like to start a moment before mm-hmm. something unique because I know casting those first few seconds is really important. So I'm talking with William about this too. I'm like, mm-hmm. what's what's a great unique way to start this scene that still makes sense for the scene, but is going to be totally different from 99% of the other actors. And you wa- you want to know the secret is it works. It really it really works. Mm-hmm. We have um, a client that was taping for a new series, and she just had a dance party for like a minute at the top of the scene, and I opened it and I was like, this is so different. I've never seen. And, and she was so committed. Yeah. It was a series that takes place in the 90s, so she had, you know, period music. I can't believe we're calling the 90s a period Oops, series, but yeah, we are. Yeah. Um, it's 40 years ago. <laughs> Somebody just had a heart attack. <laughs> 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 Not just you, some listeners are like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what year is it? I will, no, there's nothing wrong with aging. Aging is a gift. We all know that. It beats the alternative. I'm aging great. Yeah. Just want to say that. Um, <laughs> oh, now I forgot. We, oh, um, and she did this crazy dance party, and it worked so well because she was she was in a rave in the moment before. Oh, okay. So it actually was in in the material above this where the scene started, and it just worked. And casting called us and was like, she she was so in it. She was so committed. It was so different. No, everyone just started the scene, and mm. she was just present and there. Mm. She did not get that job. She should have. But yeah. she made a ton of fans. Yeah. And the team, it, like, they continued to call her back over and over and over again, which is the goal. So, something I, I, and I, I know I've shared this with you guys before, but I want to share it to our listeners and other actors who are listening and taking notes. I always save, I've saved every single audition I've ever gone on, and I put them in certain mailboxes. Mm-hmm. And what I do is whenever I get, like, an audition from some casting director, I'll go back in my mailbox and search all the auditions I've gone in with that casting director. Yes. To see, like, oh, I've gone in for very, like, dark roles for this casting director. Okay, I see why I'm in I'm in the r- running for this role. I tell everyone, make a spreadsheet. Yeah. Make a spreadsheet. Have the casting director, the project, the role, the type of role. Was it a series regular, a guest star, recurring guest star? Um, and then, like, any notes that you had felt about the performance. Like, I felt really strongly about this one, or I didn't really connect to the material. And it, it starts to show patterns, and you'll start to see the casting directors that are calling you in over and over and over again. Yes. And it's so important. You have to know who your fans are. And here's the truth, like the actual honest-to-goodness truth, is you don't need every single casting director in town to be your biggest fan. You just need a few. Mm-hmm. True. Because True. It's, it's those first couple jobs, or, or not even first couple, but as your career continues to progress, it's the right jobs for you at the right times that build careers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if you continue to do good work, if you continue to put out work at the highest level, people will continue to see that, and you will make more fans over time. But at the beginning, you don't need 100 fans. Mm. You really just need a couple people that believe in you, and the people who should believe in you more than anything are your team. Yeah. That's something that I think we don't talk about enough. You know, I was having dinner with one of my girlfriends last night, and we were talking about a friend of hers who's an actor who hasn't had an audition from her agent in eight months. And the first thing I said was, well, then that's not her agent. If you haven't heard from your agent in eight months, they're not your agent. Sorry, that might be, like, brutally honest. No, I don't understand. If I hadn't heard from my agent in eight months, uh, four months ago, that it would have been gone. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Three months And it's uh, she's a, she was a working actor. You know, it's not like she's somebody that has no oh. credits. It's, but how, how do you stay with somebody who is not doing your their job like I tell all my clients like well when I sign people I'm like look here's my my philosophy if I'm not doing my job fire me because it's a business I'm doing a job and yes it's a personal relationship it's a very personal relationship but you know if we're not being effective on your behalf then what are we doing absolutely if there if you really feel there's somebody who can be more effective on your behalf then go with God and find them and that's not me being facetious also don't ever leave us. Um, I will hunt you down <laughs> because I can promise you that there's nobody who's more passionate about you than we are. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't had an audition in a while. Oh, actually, shall we check when we some less had an audition? This is a fun game. I passed on it. You did. <laughs> you did pass on it. I, ju- I just don't do nudity and That's sex fair. scenes. That's fine. And I, you know what? Yeah. I'm totally fine with that. Yeah. And I knew when we sent it that you were going to pass. But we yeah. still sent it. Yeah. I'm doing the Spanish role. I can't wait to show you where I got planned for that one. Yeah. Yeah. The Spaniard. 
in the Western film. Yes. Well, I hold on. Let me pull it up. That's okay. I, I get so many I mean, emails a day. No, I understand. You have other clients. <laughs> I'm not number one. I'm not Sadie. <laughs> Wait, you, wait, Sam, you can't say things like that. No, I said it. I've owned it. Wait, can I say something that absolutely... What's going on here? What's <laughs> wait, you want to hear the funniest story ever about me and Wee Sam? Is that I actually have known Wee Sam longer than I worked at Stagecoach because I was the casting intern on this show this season you were on it. Crazy. Crazy. All right. We, we can go back to the screen. <laughs> wait, pull it up. I want to watch it. Uh, no, there is nothing to watch. Um, it's just me. There's not clips? It, no, no, it's just me shirtless. I don't know why we pulled these up. We said, what audition are you talking about? Are you being facetious? I feel like you are. No, uh, the uh, Spaniard role in the Western film. Check this out. Oh, Boone. Yes. Oh, that's an... <clears throat> I didn't get that. Okay. I can take my phone. Boone is... It that's fine. Did you go out yesterday? Yeah, it did. Okay, I gotta check my fan. I have a filter set up that Andrew's stuff doesn't go in there, but sometimes. No, it's okay. Andrew's new. Yes, he's killing it. Literally, yeah. he's brand new. He's been with us like five weeks, six weeks. I want to do a dinner with you guys. Actually, uh, before we I get into the dinner thing, um, okay, this is a very typical question, but I want to hear your response mm -hmm. for somebody who either has very little credits mm -hmm. or they have maybe one or two credits or maybe they have a good commercial agent how do they get a manager there are a lot of ways to get a manager mm -hmm. um i think typically cold reaching out to people is not the best answer um i think the better answers are talking to your coach we get a lot of referrals from acting coaches um jeanette moss who was my favorite coach in the entire world um she passed away last year mm -hmm. but she is who sent me lisette mm. when lisette had no credits zero um and she called me and she's like i really again people who believe in you i really believe in her i think she's absolutely incredible will you please sit down with her and i tell everyone if somebody I trust calls me and tells me to meet with somebody, I will meet with them. It doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to be the fit for them, but I will absolutely sit down with them. And guess what? Jeanette was right about Lisette. Mm -hmm. You know what I like about that? It starts off with <clears throat> the craft. It's, it's all about the craft. And how well of an actor you are so that somebody else who's looking and working with actors all the time can speak on your behalf mm -hmm. and your ability that's a lot there's a lot more value in that than just a cold call from somebody you don't know at all yes unfortunately. and i think the thing about it is even if it's a casting or not a casting um, an acting mm -hmm. coach that i don't know super well if they were still to pick up take the time to pick up the phone and go hey this person's really special will you meet yeah now because what do you oh sorry go ahead. They're, they're taking time out of their day to pitch you just as i would to casting right so why would i say no now there are certain things about the industry that doesn't change for instance you know first looks somebody's mm -hmm. gonna you're, you're the immediately when you when you show up or your headshot you look a certain way to put mm -hmm. you in certain archetypical roles yes no no i disagree with that okay why because and, and again this comes from when i worked in casting um when i get a headshot i want to be able to see the person in any role that we're casting oh i don't okay. want them to have like heavy makeup and be like alt i don't want them to be like super preppy and like in a pink polo and like i'm a cheerleader like i want to be able to envision them in the type of role that we're casting without any you know costumes please don't wear a stethoscope in your head jobs. right 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 like not not that extreme um hmm, how about like do you mean like type yeah like for instance like a uh, a, a big burly guy with a beard you know what i mean you'll be like oh we got some and he's just not in like lumberjack attire in his headshot but it's like oh yeah he could play lumberjack you know he's not going for the head cheerleader male well, you know what i mean he might how do you know uh I, there's I mean, there's men that do cheerleading we sam i know but and their bases and they're big how do you know like a burly dude yes they have to lift cheerleaders with one hand like with a gut and stuff Sometimes you ever watch cheer on Netflix? Don't I, watch. I, cheer on you Netflix. just got me canceled uh, <laughs> again. I'm just, oh my gosh! No, okay, all right, all right. You're the manager, so uh, yeah. I, look, I think our job. You're right. There are types typically that are obvious, but our part of our job is explaining to casting why you may not be exactly the type that they're looking for, but that you're still right. 
Okay. Right? All right. I guess the whole purpose of the, the original, why I even bring this up was the question was, sometimes it feels like a lot of people have said if you're uh, blonde or brown haired and, and blue eyed, there's not a lot of roles out. They're, they're, they're going more ethnically ambiguous or more, no? Am I wrong here too as well? Yeah. Okay. There's it doesn't matter. There is plenty of opportunity and I think okay. we are constantly working to hire the best person for the job. Okay. And I think it's something that we're all really advocating for but there's plenty of roles for everybody um i mean there's still more roles for white men over 40 than anything else because gotcha. there's more white guys over 40 in writers rooms and people write what they know so as the writers rooms get more diverse the guest casting gets more diverse the series regulars get more diverse and I, when i mean diverse i don't even necessarily mean you know people of color i mean more women playing judges mm -hmm. um more opportunities for people that don't feel so stereotypically like oh the head surgeon's a guy a white guy right but it takes time gotcha gotcha okay <laughs> i just i'm contradicting I, everything no 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 i it's good i mean you're in it more than i am and i'm hearing it from like you know twitter or You can't make that face at me. I'm just smiling. We're just smiling. We're having a good time. We're talking. It's going to just be like clips of me laughing and you looking at me and that's going to be it. That, that's a great episode. It might be. I would enjoy this it. This is going to be our highest rated episode. Maybe. For sure. Because I am. Okay. No. So pet peeves. Mm -hmm. I love hearing pet peeves from managers and agents. What are some of your pet peeves? I have one pet peeve. Would just one? Just one. Okay. I'm, I'm very agreeable and easy to get along with. Except if you call me and I don't pick up and then you immediately call me the second time, <laughs> I am not happy. I am not a happy camper because if I was in a position to pick up the phone, especially for my clients, I would. I dropped like everything. I was like literally answering questions from clients at my best friend's wedding last week. Um, but if, if I can't answer the phone, it's not because I'm ignoring you. It's because I'm actually in a position to not pick up the phone. Right. That's a good one. That's it. That's my only thing. I think I've done that once. No, I don't think you have. <laughs> I literally don't think you have. No, and I like, want to. The thing that's so funny about it is that I do it to Steve like every day. <laughs> 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 like if he's not like, especially like early in the morning, a lot of the times before we actually start the day, I'll call Steve. Like yesterday morning, I wanted to tell him something and he didn't answer and I really wanted to tell him. So I called him again. <laughs> Uh, Did he yell you? No, uh -huh. he just didn't pick up. <laughs> Classic Steve. Classic Steve. Because again, if he could have picked up, he would have. And I know that. But I had a really funny joke. I wanted to tell him. I, I absolutely love your, your passion, uh, not just for your, your work, but for your clients and how much you believe in them and the trust you've built with them. And I think that's really special, especially coming from a manager. And I, it, it's hard for a lot of actors to find that relationship and i think part of the problem is the actor themselves finding that good uh, that that right m mindset of trying to get that right i think people often think that having some representation is better than having no representation mm -hmm. and i disagree i think having the wrong representation for you does more harm than good um you know, people who aren't advocating for you or who are sending you projects that maybe aren't quite the right fit for you. Because the thing is, you only get so many first impressions, right? So especially I think when people first come to LA and they sign with people and they just start going out for things, I find often that because they don't have a great relationship with the person that they sign with, that maybe they should have retaped or they should have been given direction or notes in a, in a more specific way and so sometimes the work goes into casting not at the level it should be or not at the level they're capable of doing because they don't have that connection and that relationship with their teams they don't feel like they can ask questions um, and I do think that a lot of agents and managers seem unapproachable I don't think they are necessarily but I think actors get into this mindset of like oh I don't want to be a bother I don't want to bug them it's like mm. we work for you yeah let's take a moment and think about that we work for you. Like, guys, you pay us. When you book something, you pay us. So if you have questions, if you have concerns, you have to pick up the phone and call your team. And if you feel like you can't, then they're not the right team for you. 
That's a really good point. I know I've come across some some colleagues and who have had, you know, certain concerns and issues. For instance, you know, they get an audition for something and they've told them before, like, hey, I'm not really comfortable. <laughs> With new name. Oh, no, I'm being serious. <laughs> oh, yeah. I thought you were, you're kidding because I do know that about you, but we always want to present the opportunity. I just Because, like, let's be real. If I did nudity or something, like, we would break the internet. Like, oh, the world might just fall apart. <laughs> what would we all do? Everyone would be, so, it would be like an episode of Black Mirror. Like, all of a sudden, everyone would just be glued to their phones because they couldn't take their eyes off of it. If I did, like, a, you know, like, I'm getting up from the bed, you know, and the, the, the sheet just drapes off. Yeah. My back. People saw that. The backside. Break the internet. <laughs> no, but you were being serious, so. I might just do a self tape, send it to you. Please don't. <laughs> you guys. Nothing makes me more uncomfortable than when somebody does a self tape shirtless. You know I'm gonna have to do that now, <laughs> right? <laughs> Should I just take off my shirt now? No. So we're just going to continue the episode. Like, no. nothing. Everybody's like, why would you do I that? That's so un. No, no, I would never do that. I'd get canceled for the third time in this episode. I would not do that. No. No. But people, do, I mean, sometimes they think it's like for the character, it's for the scene. I'm like, no, they don't. That's interesting, though. Yeah. Does, I mean, th- has casting asked that in an audition? They before? cannot, per sack. I oh. cannot ask you to do that. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. There you go. It is actually against that guidelines. To take off your shirt in an audition. Unless it is a final callback on a closed environment. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, That's good. It I be. like those rules. Yeah, it's a good rules. rule. Rules. Rules. Um, there was something else I wanted to ask you. So let's say you, you run into this problem with your management team mm-hmm. and you're like, I'm not really comfortable. Like, we'll just try it. And maybe it's not like uh, nudity or simulate sex scenes, but it's like, I'm just, this is really bad material. I'll go, uh, not even that. It's really bad material really bad I'm material. I'm not the person to ask this because okay. I'm like the if you are not into it past person. Okay. Sometimes I'll make an argument. Like we had a client a few weeks ago who was sent a <laughs> The material was fine. It wasn't really bad. Okay. Oh, I shouldn't say We'll bleep who it is. You Sorry, have to bleep the You're going to have to buy him like a so Starbucks excited. gift card. I will literally, no. I, will, <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm, I'm I kidding, owe I'm you kidding. like dinner. Um, I can't say. Well, I just mean, no, I'm no, just too just, honest with you is the problem. I know it's the face. Uh, I, I, um, I have people open. No, we'll delete she, the name of the project. It a, was a movie, okay. and um, it was the lead. And I'm a firm believer that is it is important to oh, show people. Oh, it's the lead. It was oh. number one. Oh, great. It is important to show people that you can carry a film, that you can carry a series. It's a skill. Being number one is a skill, just like being a series regular is a skill. Um, there is something about being anointed after having done the lead of any project that I think shows people that you it shows people a lot of things it shows that you are reliable you are dedicated you'll show up to work every day you are a leader on set you are respectful to the crew you set the tone like there's so much that goes into being number one on a call sheet yes. outside of just your acting so I, I this was a very rare occasion where somebody wanted to pass on something and I, I said I think you should try this for that reason Mm -hmm. because I think it's important for people to see you in that number one spot yeah I dig that I dig that a lot makes me makes me want to be a lead you are going to be a lead I know (laughs) so pumped up you're the lead of Weezer's world that's true you're number one that's true I have an amazing team you do you got you know Peyton Alexandra Great team. All right. Great team. Uh, What's up? You forgot someone's name. That's right. Hello. Adobe Radio. Thank you. <laughs> I can't wait okay. for Wee Sam to win his Emmy and to get on stage and go through all the people he's thanking. Mm-hmm. And then to walk off stage and go, oh, I forgot to thank Steven Taylor. <laughs> no, I already have my Emmy speech ready. You ready? You're ready? Yes. Yeah, you're ready? I would love it. Um, it has to be for a comedy because if it's for a dramatic piece, it's just going to weird people out. So if it's for a comedy, it's this.
And this is when I walk on stage and go, we Sam would like to thank the Academy. I'm gonna not, and his parents. I want and the his music. Brothers. I want the music to play me. I'm going. Oh come on! <laughs> <laughs> Just ruin. <laughs> See, that's my humor. Make I know. it uncomfortable for people. Make everybody like, mm -hmm. what's going on here? I love that. That's why I love the original British Office. It made me so cringe. I love it. What is your favorite TV show of all time? Of all time. Of all time. Okay. I'm, so I'm. Um, I, mm. Wow. Of all time. all time. Holy guacamole. We're going to have to list a few. Of what? It's your, it's your favorite. I know. Get, I, don't, I'm try, I know. I'm trying to talk it out with you. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. Fair we, we got Breaking Bad's definitely in a contender okay. space. The British office is so contained in its world. Um, very groundbreaking. I really enjoyed that. Mr. Bean. I'm kidding. Um, you know Mr. Bean, right? Yes. I know. Yeah, I'm right. like, why are you kidding? That would be a totally fair answer. No, it wouldn't. It's like very really slapsticky. I'm tr uh, now I'm forgetting all the TV shows I've ever watched that I was just. Oh, Barry's freaking amazing. Barry is a definite contender. What are some of yours? What we do in the shadows. Okay, yeah, that's it's right. It's so for me. Like yeah. I'm actually devastated. There's a, um, an, a what we do in the shadows party on Friday night at Comic Con next week, and I will have already left by the oh time it gosh. starts. And I'm like, <laughs> um, because you're goth. Yeah, no. Oh, like, wait. Because it's funny. Oh, that's right. Sorry. <laughs> because it's like uh, Matt Berry on What We Do in the Shadows is, I think, she one of the not. <laughs> funniest characters goth. of all time. I thought you were goth. <laughs> I'm kidding. Not, not there's anything wrong with that. But like, no, no, no. Also, that show's not even goth. Like, what are you talking about? I know. Vampires, goth. Vampires. There's actually a South Park episode that goth versus vampires, I think. All right, versus evil. Anyway. Okay, What We Do in the Shadows. That's yeah. a good one. Um, All right. That's it. Seinfeld. Seinfeld's good. Yeah. I was a big OG okay. Seinfeld fan. Extras. Oh, Extras was great. <sighs> so good. So good. Brilliant. Like, ahead of its time. Brilliant. I mean, has HBO made a bad show? I'm not going to say that because I want to work in this industry. I'm no, never, I'm, yeah. I don't think they have. Like, I, I think most of, like, Big Love was like I mean I would never would have pulled Big Love as one of my favorites but like now that we're just thinking about like great shows HBO has made like I'm gonna write this you can't see this part right no, okay okay dun, 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 dun. <laughs> oh I know what you're gonna say yeah you're right you're absolutely right it was devastating and awful and I literally well now we have to talk about it <laughs> Dude, if I was one of the actors, and you know me, I'm so professional when it comes to everything, I would literally have to go to the show runners and creators and be like, what's going on? I think it was one of the biggest heartbreaks of my life. I, 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 I seriously go, you guys can't do this. Yeah. You don't understand. We've worked a decade almost on this. For this? And For this? No sense. No sense. I am not doing this. Eight years of character development. Out. Yeah, you're right. I think they were pissed, though. If you see them in, in – I know exactly what you're talking about. I think about. everyone they does. Were, they were furious, and well, you could tell. Yeah, and they should be furious. And you, yeah. I, I believe they did everything in their power. But, you know, if really? it's not happened, but it's still happened. Okay. I mean, if you stop the show after season five, it's a great show. <laughs> now everybody knows we're talking about Seinfeld. <laughs> yes. Now everybody knows we're talking about The Office. I should have said that. Mm -hmm. That would have been funner. Rewind it. That was so loud. That was Set really up the joke. Sorry, hit the turn. Yeah. Set up the joke. Um, hit the turn. I got to say this. I love that I could see your faces now so clearly, all of three of you, with this new table set up. We just put this in. I like this. Yeah. It's a good this setup. This is great. This is good. This is good. Um, you know, you said very in the right in the very beginning, the industry is evolving and changing. Is there any major aspects of it that you can talk about? I mean, I think a huge part of it is streaming. You know, back in the day, we had 22 episode orders. You would be on a show for almost nine months out of the year, and there wouldn't be a lot of time for you to do something else, right? Now, you're on a show for six, eight, 10, 12 episodes a lot of the time, and you have six to seven months off, but you're exclusive to that show in most situations. Mm -hmm. um, you know, doing another series regular is almost always 
off the table unless it's limited and you can get clearance from the series and the network in the studio um i think we're gonna see movies come back in a really big way which i'm really really excited about really i'm a big movie person um i would almost always take a movie over a tv show okay um it's and it's actually a lot of my clients it's how i start their careers i don't Mm. typically start people on tv yeah um but I think the streaming is changing. I think we're going to have to have a conversation about exclusivity at some point. I think SAG's really going to have to sit down with the producers and be like, you can't hold people for 18 months in between seasons and not pay them. Yeah. You know, we have a client on a show that finished shooting in May of 2021, and it's not going to air until March of 2023. What? Mm-hmm. And they can't do anything else? They can do movies, and they can do guest appearances. And if there's a limited series, we can go to them with the dates and get clearance. That's so annoying. It's not fair. No. And it's not what we signed up for. How do you how do you pay your bills? You can't. That's so dumb. That's so it's tough. dumb. But these are conversations that we're having. I also think at some point we're going to have to have a conversation about rehearsal periods. Because a lot of the times when people show up on new series, on streamers, and on movies... Um, there's a couple weeks of rehearsal involved that you don't get paid for. What? Yeah. No. Yeah. That's insane. It's per SAG. It's per the agreement. But that doesn't make sense to me because I'm a professional. If you just tell me when to show up on set, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll I'll be ready. I wonder what kind of rehearsals they're needing. Is it like fight choreography? A lot of the times it's, um, yes, a lot okay. of the times it's stuff like that. Sometimes it's dance. You know, sometimes it's some physical element. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's, uh, rehearsals. Sometimes there's, you know, big sequences and things like that. Mm. Sorry, depends I was, on the project. I was dancing. I was trying to impress you. Maybe throw more dance rolls my way or something. You want to dance on camera? No. Okay. I mean, again, break the internet kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, dirty dancing. I want to do fight scenes and action sequences so bad now. So bad. I got a little taste of that on the Equalizer. Yeah. I loved your epi- or your character on the Equalizer. Me too. It was good. Everybody did. What's your favorite character you've ever played? Ever played? Yeah. Probably this latest one in Law and Order, Organized yeah. Crime. It's really fun. It's my really favorite fun. one. You know that. Yeah. He's charming, suave, he's smart, little bad boy. You know, the chicks dig that. Yes, they do. And the guys. Oh, duh. I got a lot of messages. Did <laughs> you really? Show. Yes. Hell yeah. We love to of, hear it. A lot, of, a lot of friendly messages. Let's just say that. Taylor. Um, I yeah. ca- and I don't actually know that we've had this conversation, and maybe we should. Um, I am always telling clients, please don't respond to DMs. Wish I knew that. Don't respond. I respond to almost every single one. <laughs> if they're nice, I respond back, and if you know they're a little too friendly, I stop responding, and that's the way it goes. Okay. I don't do anything inappropriate, as you know. I am a professional. That's not why I say don't respond. Ah, why don't? Because there's no way to know who you're responding to. Very true. So it could be a minor. It could be. I know. I know you're not saying anything inappropriate. Literally, yeah. I know. My. I'm just like now. I'm like yeah. Like I don't. It's also really easy to fake messages. And yeah, to modulate it is. what people are saying. Oh, shoot. And to like crop things in a way that make things look like something they're not. All right. Well, never responding back to, to messages. I, and again. if you do want to respond, I always say that like the best thing to do is say, hey, thank you so much. This account is monitored by WeSAM's team. We will pass along the message. Oh, that's so smart. This is why they pay me the big bucks. I wish I knew this a while back. This account I is can't. monitored by WeSAM's team. We will pass over the message. Yeah. In the meantime, send twenty dollars to his Venmo. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we say there is a site for that. It's called OnlyFans. Oh yeah. But you might break the internet, so. Dude, if I join OnlyFans, dead. Enough. Dead. Internet over. Black Mirror episode where everyone's glued to their phone. It'd be a uh, very interesting OnlyFans. It would just. It would just be. Pictures of the sunrise. Yeah, it would, would be your. Well, your I mean, pictures. that's like Patreon. <laughs> Patreon is just you know exclusive content for your fans. It doesn't have to be nudie pictures. It doesn't. <laughs> Explaining that to my parents would be such a hassle that I just don't want to do that. No, I'm not talking about OnlyFans. I'm talking about Patreon. 
explaining that to my parents would be <laughs> such a hassle that I don't <laughs> Oh boy. They're so not tech savvy. It's really it's really great. I wonder what Steve this is Steve's Steve watching this episode. <laughs> That's not gonna work. <laughs> Steve <laughs> sending me my resignation like my termination. Being like Oh, does he still wear the Bluetooth thing? No, we have AirPods now. Okay, this is him. Yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> that's my impression. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> never let Taylor and we Sam. We, when we went to Legend, we were talking about me coming on the show. Yep. And Steve literally said, well, what are you going to say that I didn't say? Slam. <laughs> he did. Steve he said Smith it to you. With the hard <laughs> like, slam. What's Taylor going to say that I didn't say? Whoa, Steve. Coming in hot with the slam. I mean, he's not wrong. He's not wrong. This en- entire episode has been entirely too friendly. Like, I'm, like, just being very honest. I mean, I always am. I think all my clients know that. I kind of just... Here's what I like about this episode. Yeah. It's shown that you are real. Yeah. You, there's no, like, facade with you. You know the business very well. You love your clients. You bust your butt for them. Yeah. And y- you have a good time. You've got a great sense of humor. And you kick ass at what you do. I think candor is one of the most important things you can have with your team. Yeah. It's just so, it's communicating with them, communicating with the people in Mm -hmm. your corner that are advocating for you. Right. You have to trust that the people that are calling casting about you, calling the studio executives, calling the network, that they are saying the right things about you at the right time. Let's do it. Let's do an improv. Okay. Oh, God. You're pitching me. Mm -hmm. For what? I do this all the time, so it's not really an improv. Um, number one bounty hunter role. He's suave. He's very much like the character on Law & Order. I mean, the first thing I would do is I would send your Law & Order footage. Okay. And we have, like, clips pulled from Law & Order that are, like, my favorites of your oh, nice. of your role. Because um, I'm also a big believer, and I guess this is, like, an important thing to talk about, is reels versus clips. Because mm. they're not the same. Okay. Can um, you distinguish? Yeah. So when we're sending clips and particularly of specific roles, oftentimes, like, if I'm pitching you on, like, a new broadcast show, like, let's say, like, a new Jack Reacher type show, right? Okay. Where it's, like, he's a, like, a tough guy. Like, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to send the footage we have of you that is most like that character. And sometimes it's not even footage. It's a self-tape. Mm. You know, if I have a self-tape that shows you in that character, that's what I'm going to send. Mm. That's why we keep all. That's why mines are all on video I or know. Vimeo. 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 Yeah. I, I, I have hundreds of self tapes on Vimeo of clients. Mm. Hundreds. Yeah. I ha- there are clients that I have their very first self tape on Vimeo ever. Wow. Oh. Which it's also kind of fun to go back and look at your work over time. But a reel is, you know, in my opinion, a perfect reel is like three minutes, no, no longer. And it should show different characters and it should be your best scene from each character Hmm. it shouldn't be like four clips of the same character or four four characters that are similar at all it should be showing really different things back to back to back to back okay like if i'm sending clips then it's like that's when i'll send like six clips from law and order okay but your reel should be a compilation your clips should be per show clips Say that again. Sorry, just so I I can understand it a little better. Clips are per show? Per show. Like only from one show? Yeah. Okay. And And all put together. And then the reel Mm -hmm. can be from... It's a compilation. So it can be from... I think it should always be your strongest moments from each project. And it should be short. Like no one wants to watch a 10-minute reel. Let's be honest. They're not going to watch a 10-minute reel. That's so interesting. I, 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 I like hearing these things. Yeah. So I've heard kind of like not ten minutes, but more on the other th- on the other side of things. Not to say this is wrong or no, right it's, or it's just it's just different. The thing about our business is that it's all subjective, right? Yeah. There's n- nothing that is r- well. There are wrong things. Things are wrong, but yeah. most things are subjective. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I I find that to be highly effective. Yeah. I also think on a reel, including something just because you've been on it, if it's not your strongest work, is not beneficial for anybody. Say that again including something on your reel just because you were on a show when it's not your strongest work or maybe it's not your strongest Mm. scenes is not beneficial just for what just to show that you were on the show yeah 
you know, a lot of the times when people do guest roles, particularly on broadcast shows, you know, say they're acting opposite you, who's a recurring guest star, like the camera's going to be mostly focused on you mm. or mostly focused on the series regular. So a lot of the times it's, there, there isn't very much to show. So why put it on your reel? Mm. What if that's all you have? I, no. I send self tapes. Yeah, that's true. I send self tapes on clients who have huge credits yeah. just to show them doing something that maybe they haven't done on camera before. Mm-hmm. Almost like every single, cl- I, I, almost every single client I still send. I have like favorite things that I send. What do you expect out of your clients on a on a baseline? No matter who oh they are. Oh my goodness, baseline. Um, do your auditions. Do them on time. Do them well. Um, make strong choices. Make the choices that feel authentic to you. Um, communicate. That's a huge one. Like the more I know about what you're doing and what's going on in your life, the better I can do my job. So say all of a sudden you're doing like firearms training. Like that's important for me to know. Or, you know, say I have COVID, I can't work for two weeks. I need to know that. True. You got to communicate. I think the clients that we do the best work for are clients like you that we talk to or text all the time. Mm. Um, And I think a lot of times people, especially when we first start working with them, are afraid to kind of reach out. Um, and it's like, call me, call me, call me, call me. Um, coaching is so important. Training, you know, watching film, watching TV. This is your job. It is your career. And you need to teach, treat it as such. Um, <laughs> no, I was going to say, like, call when they when you do call your rep, call with a reason. You know, it's like, what? and if the reason is, hey, is there anything I can do on my end? Or just call to say hi. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. What's wrong with that? I guess nothing. There's I always feel like because you guys are busy too, because you guys have a bunch of clients. I'm just going, hey, what's up? That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's a relationship, right? Yeah. You know, you. that's the thing about management is, yes, we are here to guide your career. We are here to advise you, mm. to help you understand the business, to help you make the right choices. But we're also here to make you help you make the right choices for you. Yeah. And the more we know you, the better relationship we have with you, the better we can do that. Right. That, that that comes over time, you know. Yeah. Like I have clients that I talk to every day, and some days there's nothing going on in their business. It's just, hey, mm-hmm. you good? Good. I don't mind that. Yeah. I send Steve like a text message every day, of just me, like a selfie. Yes, you should. Yeah. He hasn't responded should I send in a him long a time. Selfie of you right now? I guess it's not a selfie if I take it, huh? Just a picture. Should I flex or no? No. <laughs> you really want to do action rolls, so maybe. No, you don't like the bite, biting. Up? <laughs> no. Okay. Oh, uh, that's like. Oh, sorry, we I'm keep upset slamming. That you didn't, I'm upset that you didn't take the picture. <laughs> you know, we get in these like really great moments of mm-hmm. like being really serious and having a great dialogue, and then you just make me laugh. Yeah. You're gonna have to do so much cutting. I'm so sorry. There's no cutting involved. <laughs> We're keeping everything except for the stuff that we really need to cut out. There are things that really need to come out yeah but that's that's what i love about this show because sometimes it gets a little too heavy you know what i mean yeah. or or you know but like we break it up we keep it alive you know yeah we're what this is 210 okay. from just this podcast so you know we keep a good pace to it yeah. it's conversational it's it fun is com- i think engaging i think that's what's so fun is it's like yeah we talked about the business and we talked about a lot of things that I hope are helpful to people, but it's also just a conversation. And I hope I hope if people take anything away from this, mm-hmm. it is that your agent, your manager, your casting directors, your coaches, your executives, the people making decisions, they're all just people. They're all just people doing a job. That's right. And they do it because they love it, hopefully. But there, there's no reason to think of people as unreachable or... You know, I I find oftentimes in our business, it feels like everyone is the Wizard of Oz behind a magic curtain. Mm. And when I first moved to L.A. and I started working in casting, that's actually why I went and worked in casting. Because I was like, oh, I want to know what the Wizard of Oz is like. What's it like behind the curtain where all the decisions happen? And pretty quickly, I was like, oh, it's really straightforward. People doing a job. Very true. Very true. It's a business. You're so wise. Oh, yeah, so wise. It's a business. So wise. <laughs> All right. Can I ask you my favorite question? I don't know how much time we have. Um, uh, we went over. We have oh, to. We're, oh. We are so screwed. Okay. Um, can I ask you my favorite question? Okay. Yeah. 
So this is like notorious. I ask basically every single person I've ever met this question. Um, I haven't asked you, I don't think, because I started only doing it like during COVID because I found it was a really great way to get to know people. And I've obviously known you a very long time. Okay, hold on. (laughs) We say I'm done. He's okay. Serious, serious questions. Um, What is your favorite movie of all time? Red Belt. Why? It is a story about even if you are in a situation where all the odds are against you mm-hmm. and you feel you can't get out of it, there's always a situation where you can get out of it. Oh, very similar to my favorite movie. Okay. <laughs> this is where you ask me what my favorite movie is. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask you off screen. <laughs> okay, I'm so mean. <laughs> no, I mean, no, fair what's enough. Your favorite? No, I'm kidding. No. What's your favorite movie? Yeah, I don't have one. Oh, that's, I don't believe that. <laughs> Yeah, it's not true. No, what, what is it? What is it? Um, it's A Few Good Men. Have you never seen A Few Good Men? Is that the one with Tom Cruise, yeah. Jack Nicholson? He's like, yeah. you can't handle the truth. Yeah. Hmm. It's about murder. Is there a murder there involved? There is a murder. That's yes. Right. I haven't seen that, to be honest with you. Have you not? No. We Sam, it'll be your, I think if you watched it, it would be your favorite movie of all time. No, probably not, but I'll, I, I'm pretty sure it's up there. I'll, get, I'll watch clips on YouTube. I've no. Watched, I'll watch no. clips from it. no. Can't watch clips. <laughs> watching okay, let's leave everybody with this. Watching clips on YouTube mm-hmm. is not the same as watching a show or a movie. All right, then I have never watched a show or a movie. <laughs> 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 okay, um, we're gonna have to like drag you to the office and handcuff you <laughs> to the table and make you watch movies. Is what I've decided. <laughs> Imagine. You have a new client coming in, and you're like, "Hi, welcome!" And it's just me in like one of the rooms. <laughs> with the it's like, ah, Holly! <laughs> <laughs> like your eyes, like taped open. Oh! I, I like. I have like a whole list of things that I would make you watch. Okay, a few good men. You've really never seen anything. I've never seen a. I've never seen a few good men for real. Uh, okay. What um, else? Raging Bull. Uh, clips. <laughs> All about Eve? No. Uh, I don't even like the name of that. <laughs> is this a chick flick? All about Eve? No. Feels like a romantic comedy, it's like a rom com. not. What is it about? It's Betty Davis Who? as an. <laughs> I'm literally leaving. I'm actually, I'm actually leaving now. This has been so great up until right now. What happened? <laughs> Betty Davis. No, I'm leaving. She's an actress. She is, in fact, okay, an actress. Great. All About Eve is still tied for the highest Oscar nominations of all time. Oh, I've never seen it. 1955. It's a 1955 movie. <laughs> yes. Incredible. Yeah. What else? Oh, my God. We're just going to skip over uh, Betty. Okay. Um, mm, mm, mm. I have, mean, have you seen 39 Steps? No. It's an old Alfred Hitchcock movie. It's I like the Jason Bourne have, of that time. to be honest, but it's not. You didn't like it? It's okay. You got bad taste. Um, on the waterfront. <laughs> on the waterfront. Is that another rom com. <laughs> okay. You're gonna get. I'm me literally at going it. so red. <laughs> and um, you're my right. manager. All right. Oh my um, God. Let's let's give you an easy one. Have you ever seen Ocean's Eleven? Yeah, I okay. love that. Fair enough. I love Ocean's Eleven. I love, <laughs> I love those movies so much. I would die to play one of those cool guys Same. in the film. Brad Pitt's character is always eating something in almost every scene. Oh, such a great character choice. <laughs> such a great character choice. Okay, fair enough. George uh, Clooney. <laughs> I probably played George Clooney. I got that silver hair coming in. No, you don't. <laughs> I'm literally looking at you right now. Is it still wet? Uh, anyway. Anyway, uh, yeah. Um, let's see some other good movies that I have uh, that I've seen that you definitely would like. Um, it's hard to think of any. Oh, the secret in their eyes is so depressing. I'm One of th- not into depressing. Okay. Uh, you know what I did just watch the other day? That's kind of depressing, but kind of interesting. What? Um, Desperately seeking Susan. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Now these titles are making me angry. <laughs> these are hmm. all like really good movies. Like I I'm know, not. But the titles. You received. Make- okay, fine. John Tucker must die. We'll give you an actual chick flick. That's the name of a movie. <laughs> That's a fucking classic right there. It is a. I fucking love John Tucker it's a Must classic. Die. I am like once, so literally, intense. literally. I'm like once a week. I'm like Steve. Can we go pitch John Tucker Must Die as a series? All right. <laughs> Who should I play? Well, JT. 
<laughs> they're in high school, so um, yeah, we might then. have to. I'm not watching it. <laughs> it's so hard for me to watch stuff. Anything? Yeah, because I'm watching it. Um, to suspend my disbelief and enjoy it for what it is is so difficult to begin with. Yeah. But I'm always watching it, going, "What role could have I played in this? Oh, okay. Oh, I like what they're doing with this acting choice. Oh, the director had an interesting choice here. Oh, the lighting looks I mean, really nice. I think nice. that's why I'm you're a good actor, though. Maybe, but it, I, it's really, really difficult. Like, even starting season three of Barry, mm -hmm. I have to brace myself because I have to be in the mood to watch it. Otherwise, I'm just gonna watch it going. Oh, I just want to. I want to work. I'd rather work and act than watch things. The, in, at an insane, unhealthy level, probably. I mean, again, I think that's why you're so good, because, it, <sighs> at the end of the day, really, what it comes down to is. Is this the thing you love more than anything in the world? Because as an actor, you're going to have to sacrifice basically everything else in your life for it. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to be gone for months at a time away from your family and your friends. You're going to be, you know, on overnights for six months. Like, I don't think people realize how strenuous some productions can be. Mm -hmm. Like, you have, as an actor, you have to be willing to give up everything else. Relationships, houses you love, time with your kids if you have kids to be on set mm -hmm. you know and in our industry you tend to spend more time with your coworkers than anybody else yeah and if you don't love it more than anything if you're not itching to do it every single moment of every day i think it's too hard one of the best moments i've ever had on set was on for the people mm -hmm. and it was during the second episode of the first season where i got this really big case and i had literally a page of monologue dialogue and I remember I worked that monologue so much and that day I was shooting all my scenes so I literally worked from morning until evening and there was such a satisfying feeling of nailing every single scene producers liked it director liked it everybody's like we got it, it was really great everything's like yeah and then working all the technical aspects of it and then going home so exhausted but so satisfied and going man i really earned earned it today i really earned it and i was like i could do this every day and be so exhausted and still love it i'll never forget that there's there's been a few days like that on set and then some days are just like absolutely boring and mind-numbing but you find games to play for instance this is one of my favorite games to play and i played with jasmine savoy brown who's a great actress It's a court courtroom scene, okay. right? And for those of you who don't know, courtroom scenes are very notoriously difficult to suit because there's a lot of coverage. You got you know defendants, uh, prosecutors, like jurors. I think A Few Good Men would be one of your favorite movies of all time if you watched it. Probably, probably. Um, so I, I didn't have any lines. I'm literally just with Jasmine sitting in the back, going, in you know engaged listening just. And we're, we're there for most of the day. So we play this game called the We Sam game, right? And so what I do, I, I whisper to Jasmine. I go, um, this is during the time where all those, like, fires were happening in California. Yeah. And I was like, uh, he just started the Breckenridge fire, and he's realizing it's gotten out of hand, you know? He mm -hmm. started it accidentally. And so what she has to do is she has to find the extra who looks like they just started the Breckenridge fire, and so when you find that one guy who kind of looks like, you know, you don't, they don't know people are looking at them. They just have their, yeah. yeah. This is and a great game. It's so much fun. And then one of the funniest ones we did, and I'm not going to mention who, who's, who the actor we picked out. He was one of our actors. We go, just realized he got a text from his mistress saying she's pregnant. And the person was on the phone and you could see the... <laughs> Oh my gosh, me and her were losing it for hours and hours at a time, but that's a great game to play. Yeah, I mean, in between takes, in between scenes, like it takes a long time to set stuff up. I don't think people realize that. No, no it's a great game. It's called the We Sam game. Okay, so. I think we're going to have to like send out a memo mm -hmm. to all the agencies to let their clients uh, be aware of this game so that everyone can start playing it on set. Absolutely. It's a great idea. And then <laughs> watch people get fired. Um, <laughs> well, yes, like because they'll start doing it during takes and not focus, and then they right. will get fired, and then it will be on me and you. Well, yeah. mostly you. Well, no, it's on Jasmine. Jasmine's been known to, like, she has cue cards. You know that? I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you make that joke, but, uh, 
I know there are real there actors. Are I've, actors. I've worked with an actor who I was uh, kind of looking forward to it. I'm not going to mention the actor or the show, but I was really kind of disappointed because he had to have a teleprompter for all his lines. Um, as your one of your managers, I'm going to give you a smidgen of advice. Um, yeah. When you are saying things like that, um, you should use they or them because then it's not assigning a gender to the actor and then it's harder for people to figure out. What did I say? You said he. Oh, I meant they or them. <laughs> did I fix it? No. <laughs> no. It, it could have been... Um, well, no, that No, a woman would never do that. So. <laughs> Slam. <laughs> Slam on the whole. <laughs> yeah. no, um, uh, good, good. But, I mean, yeah. No, that was good advice. I'll take that advice. I have some, I have some good pieces of advice. You have great pieces of advice. Mm -hmm. Did you have a good time today? I had a great time. I'm like super hyper nervous about seeing what comes out of the episode. Um, but I think it'll be good. I'm like, yep. it's like kind of all a blur. Does that happen to everybody where they're just like, I have no idea what I said. Yeah. I promise you this. We will never put anything out here to make you look bad or me good. look bad. I know. Or make stagecoach look bad. Seems like. Mm. Seems like fire Taylor. Get the paperwork ready. <laughs> Fire Taylor, period. Oh. No, I guess we can't talk about letting go clients on air, can we? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be a no. A solid <laughs> pass. Solid no. Hard pass from Taylor. Hard pass. You know, I, what I will say is that when we make the decision to part ways with somebody, it is the second hardest thing I do. Yeah. The hardest thing I do is telling people when they test for something or they're really close on something and they don't get. There is nothing like that feeling. No. But letting people go, um, particularly if, well, not even particularly, we always really like like the people we work with. That's why we sign them because we believe in them and we genuinely like them as people. So when we're letting go of somebody, it's because something's not working. And it's a hard conversation. But I, I say that to all my clients. It's like, look, I'm here for the good days and the good conversations, but I'm also here for the hard days and the bad ones. Mm. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Taylor, you're an amazing person. You're an amazing manager. Mm -hmm. um, again, I love your passion for what you do, your passion for your your people. And um, I'm, I'm really thankful to have you part of the team. And I'm, I'm very lucky to have just an amazing people surrounding me constantly. And that's, uh, I attribute that to my success. So I'm very blessed. Thanks, Sam. Yeah. I'm going to cry now. But like not from laughing, but from like really. I can't wait till you're giving your Emmy speech and you're like. Yeah, I just make everybody uncomfortable. All the Hollywood elite. I can't say that. Am I canceled for that, Taylor? <laughs> this button is the <laughs> best investment we've made for the show. Is it new? Yeah, it's from the Chris D'Elia store. And uh, <laughs> yeah. I use it to whenever he interrupts. Guys, thank you so much. This has been such a great episode. <laughs> it makes different noises. I didn't realize do that. Do you guys want one for this? For the office? No, maybe. Yes. For your I team do. meetings? No, can I get one that says your quotes, though? Yeah. Like, I like think, what? I don't know. Like, Taylor's uh, just okay. <laughs> Taylor's okay. What um, do I say if we have a button for the show? What would it be? I don't know. You would have. Uh, you do, you do that. Uh, Can yeah. confirm. And then you go the place. You, you send the place. Oh, you don't? Do you know about this? No. So when I'm an emperor, <laughs> I'm sending people that have really wronged society okay. or the people around them to the place, mm -hmm. and that's a place where they get rehabilitated. Like prison? Mm, it's called the place. <laughs> it's called the place. Is it like the good place? No. So it's the bad it's place. It's not a good place at all for well, them. that's why I well, said because it's, it's, it's the bad place, right? No, it's perspective. They become good after they leave. Like people who play um, on their Bluetooth speaker, like out in public, you know, they're on a hike and they have their speaker <laughs> blaring for okay. everybody here. They go to, they go there for a week. <laughs> really wrong society. Yeah. They go Bluetooth there. speakers. What else we said? What really has wrong society? Uh, you get caught not using your turn signal a few times. Mm, okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Um... You call Taylor twice. <laughs> that is that's a good one. We could actually do that. I would be down for that. Yeah. Um, what about people who show up to set at their call time? Okay, let me tell you something. <laughs> when I'm show running and being a producer on my show, yeah. If someone comes in late one time, totally get it. Mm. Right. Do oh, we? Oh, oh. I'm forgiving. 
<laughs> yes. Bluetooth speakers are out. Being late once if, in. <laughs> if you come to set late again, I have this thing where it's the same thing also if you show up and you don't know your lines. I will stop production and mm -hmm. be like, oh, no. <sighs> We're not paying you, are we? Hold on. Let's get the counting out down here and we'll stop everything. We'll get accounting down and be like, hey, are we not paying him? And they'll be like, no, he's, we're paying him. We're like, we Sam, it's right, it's right here. And like, oh, we are paying you. What are you doing? And then I would fire him or her <laughs> and then have a replacement in 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's fair. No? I agree. If is that I, too intense? I feel no. like I just got really intense, too intense for <laughs> no, Taylor. No, I mean, look, no. if I ever found out a client went to set and didn't know their lines, I'd probably drop them. Good. All the work that we do to to get you to set and it's, why would, it's your dream, right? Why wouldn't you not be prepared? If you're a co-star, guest star, recurring guest star. I don't care what like you are. Regular, like, you're getting paid thousands of dollars. You're getting paid. Not you're the there for a job. but yeah. Okay. Co -star. I, I'm a big believer that co-stars should go, like the title co-star should go away. And that it should all just be guest, guest cast, guest stars, Ooh, because like the co-stars are there just as much as the guest stars. Just because they're they don't have as much to do in the episode doesn't mean they're not there working. I like that a lot. And you can pay people less to be a co-star, which means things that often would be a guest star turn into co-stars. I think everything should be a top of show guest star. Okay. That's my big belief. If you are there for one day, if you are there for eight days, the showrunners are going to kill me. But I really do believe that. Okay. I think the work that you put in. And, and it's also with the pay disparity. Like when you have people making hundreds of thousands of dollars on an episode and then somebody making a thousand dollars for the day. Yeah. Like that's tough. Like, you know, we, we want people to be able to pay their bills as sure. actors. And also we want them to be able to get their health insurance. Yeah. Oh, I saw a great thing on the Jimmy Kimmel, Kimmel show. Did you see this? If uh, actors are just like a certain amount away from getting their health insurance. Yeah. They're hiring them on as that's actors. That's amazing. But they shouldn't have to do that. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, but I, that's my that's my point. Is like, no. no, you're right. Yeah, that's a wonderful thing that they're doing. And I actually, we there are a lot of casting directors that will say like, hey, if somebody's like a couple thousand bucks short of of their insurance this year, like let us know. Particularly older actors, maybe people who had retired and were relying on residuals to earn their insurance, mm. um, and now that's not the case. Yeah. Um, where they'll be like, just let us know, and we'll bring them on as a day player. Oh, great. Yeah. That's something to keep in mind when, God willing, I'm show running my own show. <laughs> so yes to show running, no to directing. Yeah. Yes, directing. Maybe directing my own show would be different than directing somebody else's show. Yeah, you you did say that. You said you don't want to like episodic direct, which I, I get that. Yeah, it's a lot of listening to other people. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah, it's a lot of that. It's a lot of teamwork. Uh, you know, just teamwork and filmmaking. Ugh gross you're, if you're listening answers. and you are not on youtube watching i just gave lisa I'm like the most side eye because filmmaking and making television is a communal medium right every single person that shows up to set that day is necessary and valuable if they can't tell we're kidding that's the most annoying part like the I stuff mean, i say about jasmine some people don't know? have a sense of humor you know that right oh i know because of the messages i receive whenever <laughs> i talk about jasmine and they're like hey that's not cool. And I'm like, hey, she's my friend and it's a joke. Yeah, she's like your bestie. You know how insane it would be for me to, when I post that stuff to mean it? I mean, I do. Because I know your sense of humor. But like, if you literally just showed everybody what we were talking about. <laughs> oh, there are no secrets on We Sam's World. I don't remember what camera was just on at that time. So maybe maybe we did, maybe we did. We'll, we'll figure out later. We'll, we'll figure it out. I am so Work your magic, Peyton. Oh, I am so yeah. sorry, Peyton. This is going to be the most labor-intensive episode. I'm sorry, Peyton. It's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll get you some good lunch. <laughs> like Taylor's never home. allowed back. <laughs> it's too much. Um, Taylor, this was an absolute joy. Thank you for coming on the show. Oh, thank you. For I me. love your jade bracelet. I forgot to compliment you when you walked in. Thanks. Um, people want to follow up with Stagecoach. They can search uh, on Instagram, Stagecoach Entertainment, yep. for the handle to see all of our all our clients, our all clients, of your yeah. clients. Well, Bailey, who was on the show, she always says our clients, and I love it. That's she literally called me when Ali Cravalho came over, and she goes. I didn't know that we repped Moana. 
<laughs> she's an angel, genuinely. I could see her saying that. <laughs> like, she's c- literally an angel. Like, she's very sweet. Yes, she is. All she, of all of my clients are. Super, she cursed a lot when she was on the show. She did. I was shocked. The woman was too stunned to speak. Um, she is. I am. I will leave you with this. I am very grateful that I get to be on your team, and that I, every single client I work with is the kindest, most talented, most respectful person I've ever met. And we work really hard to make sure that you know our roster as a whole reflects that. Um, and you are a shining example of that always, even when you are calling your co-stars out for not knowing their lines. Thank you so much. <laughs> Who, eh, no, am I your favorite client? Absolutely. <laughs> you heard it here. <laughs> Dude, I beat all of you. <laughs> Absolutely, we Sam. I'm the best. <laughs> and it feels so good saying that. Keep the camera on me. <laughs> I see it switching, and I don't like that. It's about me. <laughs> all right, um, now that now, first of all, you cannot go on air and tell. We're not done yet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't know if you know how this works, but <laughs> you gotta wait till I say Do we're it. done. <laughs> you can't just walk. Out. You're like, all right, everybody. Oh, man, that was it's that enough. was a shit show, it's wasn't enough. that? Weekend? <laughs> it's enough. All right, play us out, Peyton, because she needs to get out of here. Hey, thanks for tuning into the show. We had a great time with Taylor. Uh, Show some love. Uh, Make sure that you subscribe to us, and always thanks to our um, fans. Maybe we won some of you back today after last week's episode with the moose. (laughs) Probably not. (laughs) Hey, always remember, listen, think, and talk. We got the giggles. Bye.